the fact that he's smart, he's sound, he's got good bone, um, good conformation, good size, and, and you know, to top it all off, he's got talent. He's a very attractive horse. He's very well balanced, you know I mean? You know, he's very correct. I think this horse has got every, every right to make a great sign. On a cold December day in Oklahoma City, several individuals in the forefront of the quarter horse race breeding business and several quarter horse racing news affiliates gathered at Will Rogers International Airport, awaiting the arrival for a Tex Sutton flight from California. All the anticipation of what is destined to continue the breeding dynasty for the years to come is arriving on this flight. But why the big turnout on this frigid morning? Well, it's all because of him. It's one of the things that I think is uh, interesting about the quarter horse business versus the thoroughbred world. In the thoroughbred world, um, a lot of owners will go ahead and commit to a, a farm early and that allows us as stallion managers lots of latitude to get out there and start the process early to be able to make people familiar with the horse, know where the horse is going to be, and, uh, and start um, uh, gathering mares for, for a stallion. Uh, quarter horse guys, it's not a criticism, it's just an observation, but they have a tendency to want to dance every dance till the last minute. And uh, my belief is you're better off to commit early and then uh, everybody knows where the horse is going to be. And, and it takes uh, all the questions out, everybody knows. So that, that's why we, uh, we pursued the horse. We felt like it was necessary to get the press release out and, and go on the rest of the year. You know, Lazy E, I mean, we're, we're not necessarily partners with them in the official, but we're partners with them. Uh, Matt and Butch are a big part of, of what we do as a program. And for me, the decision was more theirs. You know, do you really want to stand two full brothers? And if you do, then that's where we want to go. Uh, and they approached us and we said, yeah, we, I mean, what better than the stand, you know, alongside Corona Cartel and uh, so it really wasn't, you know, that hard of a decision. And I think most of the industry recognizes how closely affiliated we are with Matt and Butch. And uh, so, but again, we were, I was more concerned about, you know, do you guys want to stand two full brothers? And, and you know, Big Lou's owned by the, people, by the McKennies and they own Lazy E. And so it was more, hey, we'd love to come if you guys want us to be there. And if not, then there were others that were definitely interested. We heard early on from Mike Joyner, you know, that uh, he was he was a nice horse. Mike throws uh, compliments around like manhole covers, but uh, he was talking uh, very favorably about the horse early on. He was a good yearling. You know, he was a very good yearling. He was very attractive. And, you know, Keith had to spend a lot of money to keep him in the partnership. And um, uh, so that tells you what kind of looking horse he is. You know, executive looks, she really makes a really pretty baby. And, you know, he was, we had some really great horses in that group. Call Me Cole was out of that same, same uh, pasture that they lived in. Um, and he was just a really, I would, I would use the, the word chill horse. He was just a horse that, you know, he wasn't one that was over there bucking and raring and, and messing around with the other colts. He just kind of kept to himself and and 
never really did anything wrong. He just kind of fit all the angles. He looked like a horse that you could really do about anything he wanted with. Um, and I think that what he's always been is just a really balanced, balanced individual. And usually when people see him, they're like, oh, he's not a very big horse. And then they walk up to him and he's, you know, pushing 16 hands as a two-year-old. Uh, in our racing program, he's the first colt I ever raced. Um, and in our racing program, we send everything down uh, to Mike Joyner uh, to break. And we like it down there because they can train all year and, and do all that. And then we're just, uh, we really like California racing. And so uh, we'd had a, a, a three-year-old that Paul was, Paul was racing. And so we just decided to send him, send him out to Paul and it worked really well. I mean, Paul's a, obviously a really, really good trainer. Keith Nelson contacted me and told me he had a colt that he wanted to send me. Um, he, the colt was at uh, Sunland Park uh, with Mike Joyner at the time. Uh, Mike and Justin broke the horse at Frontera and uh, they took the horse over to Sunland and they put a couple works, uh, gate works in him at Sunland and they were very impressed with him. So, so the colt the colt had been working really good at Sunland Park. Um, they said they wanted to send him out here to California to run him in California. Um, um, he's, he's been, I always call him the kind of a little pro because he's just done everything right. You know, sometimes people tell you they got a good horse and he's this and that and you get him and he's not always as good as they say he is. But this one was, he was every bit <clears throat> as good as they claimed and maybe even better. We could tell after his first couple of works that the Colt had a lot of talent. Um, you know, he... In, in his first race, in the maiden race, you know, he, he, he looked very impressive and he just just did everything right and uh, and did it with ease, you know. Put him in the gates, he stands good, he breaks, he runs his race and he, and he runs hard. You know, the Colt, the Colt just did everything right ever since the day I got him. He did everything right, broke his maiden, then we were on to the Ed Burke, he won his Ed Burke trial. Looked great, qualified the Ed Burke. The final looked like it was going to be tough, but he got that done too. KVN Corona with Jesus Ayala in the irons broke sharply that day in the Grade 1 Ed Burke Million Futurity, running headlong with the front runners in the race through the early stages of the 350-yard event. Halfway through the race, the Colt would display what would become his signature characteristic, which is his will to win that catapulted him to the wire in front, thus becoming a Grade 1 winner in the Million Dollar Futurity in only his third career start. Didn't really sink in until a little bit later. I have a video of my wife. Um, after the race they were interviewing us and my wife was behind us and we were talking about how professional he was and classy it was and my wife lets out this yell she's she's back to us and so it, it, it was it was pretty amazing but then later when we started to think about how amazing it is to own the mare and breed and raise it and take it to auction and have the opportunity to buy it back and run it, it probably really is a once in a lifetime horse uh, and to tap it all off, he's just beautiful. So uh, it's it's he's been a, he's been a lot of fun. We we probably would have appreciated it a little bit more at the time uh, had we really understood how fortunate it is to have that happen and him still be a colt. Um, it's just you know, like I say, probably once in a lifetime. Simply born to be a champion, the brilliant KVN Corona, the son of the legendary Corona Cartel, now standing set for 2019 at Lazy E Ranch. The full brother to grade one winner and sire Big Lou was a champion runner, winning the grade one Edbert Million in a gutsy performance for the ages over Low Sal 2 Million winner Jay Fire Up. He also put in an amazing performance to get up in the closing strides to win the grade two Pacific Coast Court Horse Racing Association Breeders Futurity, ready to grab the torch of his legendary father and continue the Corona Cartel bloodline into the next generation of runners. The brilliant KVN Corona.